want to go back to this simulation because it allows us to do a direct comparison of the estimated Lewis bending stress to a finite element calculation. But this particular geometry also allows us to go to the mesh teeth and look at the contact stresses that are developed. In this case, we simulated a pair of gears with 16 teeth. They're in the English system, and so they have a diametral pitch of 8, a pressure angle of 20 degrees, and a 1.5 inch face width. There are 16 teeth on these gears. I am applying a tangential load to one of the gear teeth so that I can use FEA to find the bending stress at the root of the tooth. And in this case, I use a point probe and find it to be on the order of 11,381 PSI. We'll do a hand calc and compare that in a minute. But you will notice that this Lewis bending stress calculation is for the worst case scenario of a tangential load applied directly to a single tooth. So we are assuming the contact ratio is one. Whereas if you look over here at the meshing teeth, we have contact between more than one tooth. And so this is a worst case scenario, but we have ignored the radial load that's pushing down on the tooth, which changes the stress state at the root. And we have also completely ignored the stress concentration factor at the root of the tooth. That's something that we are going to have to discuss in a few minutes. In the problem we just discussed, I mentioned that we wanted to compare a hand calculation of the Lewis bending stress using this equation to our FEA calculation and see what the difference was. We are in this case using a diametral pitch on the gear, which is equal to eight teeth per inch. We have a number of teeth on the gear, which is equal to 16. You don't need it in this equation, but we do need the face width of 1.5 inches, and we do need the Lewis form factor, which we look up in a table of 0.296. When we plug all of those things into the Lewis bending stress equation, we get on the order of 6,576 pounds per square inch. Now I ran another FEA and I refined the mesh even more and I found that the stress at the tooth root 12,388 PSI. I just did a Lewis bending stress calculation and I only get 6,576 PSI. What the heck is going wrong? Well, remember, we have completely ignored the stress concentration factor. So if I take my maximum root stress from the FEA and I compare it to my Lewis bending stress, I would get a stress concentration factor of on the order of 1.88. And that is the secret here. The Lewis bending stress, as we have calculated it, ignores the stress concentration factor. It also ignores the radial load. And so we could include the radial load in this problem as well. But we can find the elastic stress concentration factor using graphs of stress concentration factors for cantilever beams with a radius. And so here's an example of such a graph. And in this case, what we have is the stress concentration factor on the y-axis plotted against capital R over H, where capital R is the fillet radius for a built-in cantilever beam, and H is the cantilever beam thickness. So I can use a chart like this to give me a stress concentration factor. So we need to know H and we need to know R in order to figure out where we're going to be on this SCF curve. So H is the tooth width, which if I go into fusion and open the measure tool, I can figure out that the tooth width is 0.2. 207 inches. And now we need to find the radius of the fillet, but I actually built this with the fillet radius of 0.063 inches. And so I can use the inspection tool to measure that. So I have a radius of 0.63, which gives me an R over H value of 0.3. If I go back to the SCF chart, then for 0.3, I am about at a stress concentration factor of two. So now, using a KT of two from the chart, I multiply my Lewis bending stress by two and I get a value of 13,152 PSI. I compare that to value I got from FEA, which is 12,388, and I am within 10%. So that explains the difference between the hand calc and the FEA.